So if we're going to talk about functions, it's going to be important for us to talk about the domain of a vector function as well. So let's say that you have yourself a vector function, like r of t is equal to, we'll make this one a three-dimensional vector function. So there are going to be three component functions associated with this, f of t, g of t, and h of t. The domain of r is going to be equal to the intersection of the domains of f, g, and h. In order to be a valid output for the vector function, we need to have a valid output for all three of these component functions. Otherwise, we won't actually be getting a vector out of this. So as an example of something like this, let's go with something that has a lot of domain restrictions. So three big ones to look for are denominators, square roots, and logarithms. So we'll throw all three of these in here. We'll say natural log of t plus 1, <clears throat> the square root of 9 minus t, and then t divided by 4 minus t squared. So three different kinds of domain issues associated with this. Uh, for the natural log, the argument of a natural log, the thing inside a logarithm, has to be a positive number. Solving this by subtracting 1 from both sides, we'll get that t is greater than negative 1. As far as the square root is concerned, anything that is underneath a square root, or uh, more specifically, a uh, root with an even index, so a square root, fourth root, sixth root, those kinds of things. This one will take two steps to solve, but we're going to wind up with t is less than or equal to 9. And finally, when we have a denominator, it is necessary that whatever's in a denominator cannot be equal to 0, which lets us know that t cannot be equal to either positive 2 or negative 2. So what I'm going to do is take all of these domain restrictions and put them on a number line all together. So we have something interesting at negative 1, we have something interesting at positive 9, and then we have interesting things at both positive 2 as well as negative 2. So greater than negative 1 means that we will be open circle at negative 1 and shade to the right. Less than or equal to 9 lets us know that we will be closed circle at 9 and shade to the left. And then simply not equal to at plus or minus 2, we can throw open circles there. However, we see when we start to fill this in, negative 2 isn't actually going to have an impact here because the shaded area never actually makes it over to negative 2. So it doesn't matter that it can't be equal to negative 2. So the domain for this vector valued function, given in interval notation, will be from negative 1 to positive 2, union 2 to 9, open brackets wherever you have open circles, and a closed bracket where we have a closed circle.